here. Mr. Mio Poka. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. How are you? Good, good. How are you? Good, good. Thanks, Mr. Yes. Mio right? Yes, yes, yes.
begin with the prayer. Almighty God, who in your wisdom and goodness has appointed the offices of leaders and parliaments for the welfare of society, good of all human lives upon it, and the just government of its people. We beseech you to look with your abundant favor upon us, your servants, whom you have entrusted with the perform with the performance of such important trust in this community. Let your blessings descend upon us here assembled, and grant that we may treat and consider all matters that shall come under our attention and deliberation in so just and faithful a manner as to promote your honor and glory and to advance the peace, prosperity, and welfare of this region and of those whose interests you have committed to us. Amen. Item number one on the order paper, administration of oath. Honorable members, I rise to notify you that on the 31st March 2021, Her Excellency Samia Tuluhu Hassan, President of the United Republic of Tanzania, appointed Honorable Ambassador Mbaruk Nasor Mbaruk as Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs and East African Cooperation of the United Republic of Tanzania. By virtue of Article 48, sub Article 1b, Roman 2 of the treaty, Honorable Ambassador Mbaruk Nasser Mbaruk becomes an ex officio member of this assembly. Honorable Ambassador Mbaruk has indicated his desire to participate in the proceedings of the assembly. However, in accordance with Rule 5 of our rules of procedure, Honorable Ambassador Mbaruk can only take his seat. In, in the assembly after taking the oath of allegiance by the, to the treaty. Rule 9, sub rule 2 of Annex 10 to the rules of procedure specifically states that when a new member first attends the House, other than at the first sitting of the new assembly, the member shall be introduced to the speaker virtually by a member of the assembly who shall state the name of the new, min, of the new member. The speaker shall then administer the oath or affirmation of allegiance to him or her. I therefore request any member who know Honorable Ambassador Mbaruk Nasser Mbaruk to introduce him to me to enable me to administer the oath of allegiance. Honorable Speaker, this is uh, Dr. Nguara Magembe. Uh, Honorable yes. Speaker, in light with uh, the uh, the articles that you've just read, I, Dr. Nguari Magembe, uh, would like to introduce to you the Honorable Ambassador Mbaruku, Nasser Mbaruku, who has been appointed the Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs and East African Corporation, who is in Dodoma uh, waiting to be sworn in. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. So, Honorable Ambassador Mbaruku, are you there? Yes, I'm the. Uh, yes, Honorable, you can proceed and take the oath, and I hope there is someone to assist you there where you are. Proceed. I, Mbaruk Nasser Mbaruk, do affirm that I will give true and faithful service to this assembly and that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the East African community and will preserve, protect, and defend the treaty for the establishment of the East African community as by law established. So help me God. Thank you very much, Honorable. 
Thank you very much, Honorable Ambassador, uh, and uh, congratulations. You can take your seat now. Uh, Honorable members, we welcome the new ex officio member of the House who is uh, a lawyer and experienced, seasoned diplomat. He has risen through the ranks from being the third secretary, Minister of Foreign Affairs and East African Cooperation, to private secretary to the Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs and East African Cooperation, to head of Chancery. Embassy of the United Republic of Tanzania in Moscow, to Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of the United Republic of Tanzania to the United Arab Emirates and non-resident Ambassador of the United Republic of Tanzania to Iran, Pakistan, and Bahrain. He has also been in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and East African Cooperation of the United Republic of Tanzania as Director of Union Matters. Uh, Office of the Vice President of the United Republic of Tanzania. So, our Honorable Ambassador, we congratulate you and we, we are proud of your membership of this House. We know you are coming along with the, this vast experience and it is a big value addition to our Assembly. Karibu San. Thank you. And before Thank you. I proceed, I may I invite you to make uh, maiden. Uh, remark if you wish. Thank you. Uh, right Honorable Speaker, Mr. Martin Carolin Goga, Honorable Adam Hamed, Cabinet Secretary for East African Community and Regional Development, and Chairperson of East African Community Council of Ministers. Honorable members of the East African Community, Council of Ministers present, Ambassador Leberat Mfumukeko, Secretary General of East African Community, Honorable, Honorable members of the Fourth East African Legislative Assembly, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Mr. Speaker, sir, Mr. Speaker, sir, on the outset, I wish to thank God the Almighty for health and all the blessings I have been granted so far to enable me join you all in this August House. This being my first time to stand before this House, Allow me to take this opportunity to thank all members of this House for the condolence messages following the sudden demise of our beloved former President of the United Republic of Tanzania, the late Dr. John Pombe Joseph Magufuli. I further wish to thank you all for the congratulatory messages and well wishes to the sixth president of the United Republic of Tanzania, Her Excellency Samia Suluhu Hassan. Mr. Speaker, sir, I wish to present to you and all members cordial regards and best wishes from my predecessor, Honorable William Tate Ole Nasha, who has been appointed as the minister as the Deputy Minister in Prime Minister's office. In the same vein, may I take this rare opportunity to appreciate Honourable Members for your messages of felicitation and well wishes following my appointment as the Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs and East African Cooperation on 31st March 2021. Let me reiterate my personal commitment and that of the government of the United Republic of Tanzania in general to work closely with all members of this esteemed house and this secretariat. Mr. Speaker, sir, 
Let me take this opportunity to applaud you, sir, for your wise counsel and leadership on sharing this esteemed house. It is my hope that the fourth assembly will leave a legacy on deepening our integration by enacting acts to operation to to to, the oper, to operationalize the necessary institution and facilitate the process of making monetary union a reality. Sir, let us use our presence in this August house as an avenue to serve the East Africans to meet their lot awaited dream of, pro of, of uh, prosperity to their lives. I therefore wish to reflect my commitment in support of East African Legislative Assembly as a member of the Council of Ministers. And we shall together do all possible to facilitate East African Legislative Assembly in executing its mandate smoothly. On your side, honorable members, you have an obligation of inspiring confidence to East Africans by sticking and respecting rules and regulation of East African Legislative Assembly and the community so that, so that you will have moral obligation in executing our mandate of oversight. May God bless, may God bless the East African community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, thank you, Honorable uh, Ambassador Mbaru. Uh, you will sign the oath. I will also sign, then we shall exchange and we shall be assisted to do that virtually. So thank you very much. Item number three on order paper, papers. Uh, honorable members, uh, uh, before we proceed, um, Honorable Council Chair, are you there? Honorable Council Chair, I can see you. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. I was told I was being heard earlier on, so I muted everything. Ah, okay, that's fine. So, Honorable... <laughs> Honorable Council Chair, there are issues that me and you have been working on, issues to do with welfare, and uh, there has been a lot of discussions about it, meetings, and uh, I've been reporting back to the, to, the, to the Commission. But I think this is the time we need to, to be updated about it, uh, because your office is very much involved in this. So before we proceed, can we hear how far are we resolving issues of welfare that have been pending for a long time? Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker and uh, Honorable Members. Um, first of all, uh, may I begin by congratulating our brother, Baruch, uh, who's just been uh, sworn in uh, and welcome him to... Uh, this wonderful house and uh, congratulations to him. I have been in touch with the Honorable Minister uh, for Foreign Affairs um, in the last week. And I also know that uh, our Honorable colleague uh, Shuti from the Republic of Rwanda is on the call. I don't know who else is, but uh, other council members. Uh, so greetings to, to, to all of you. And uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, ordinarily, uh, I would have wished to have made uh, my maiden speech uh, upon uh, taking on the responsibility of the chair of council. But there has been a lot of things happening, in particular dealing with the issue of um, the welfare that you had uh, touched on. Uh, and really, I would really have preferred to have been able to conclusively report uh, to the members on the progress that we have made on this 
but that issue has been taking a lot more time than I had anticipated. Uh, but nevertheless, it is uh, an opportunity for me to, first of all, thank and congratulate our outgoing chair, uh, Honorable Shuti, and other council members who, uh, together with myself, have been supporting him in uh, serving the community in that particular position. And I look forward to working with my other colleagues who uh, I'll be looking up to, to for support in uh, leading the affairs of the community in line with the treaty that uh, we all are signatories to. Honorable Speaker, I have been really, having been in this House uh, and being an ex-official member for the last uh, two and a half years, uh, I have been very closely uh, following and aware of some of the challenges that IALA members have, have faced, uh, in particular on issues of welfare. And notwithstanding the financial constraints that the whole Secretariat and EAC institutions have suffered, I have uh, drawn uh, to conclusion that uh, somehow within the area of IALA, a lot of misunderstanding seems to have developed and cropped that has led to some very, very painful delays of allowances and payments that are due to the members that I think we should not uh, allow to take any longer than is necessary going, uh, going forward. And as such, I have been in consultation with a number of uh, uh, people, stakeholders, including yourself, Honorable Speaker, um, the Secretariat, uh, the Secretary General. And as you all know, it, it is becoming now to a crisis point uh, that I am fully uh, aware of. And this, for me, is my number one priority uh, to deal with as a way of bringing this issue to a logical, uh, a logical conclusion. Uh, there are, in my view, uh, a number of steps that we have to take. One is, first of all, agree on what um, is payable, and there is some difference of interpretation of what that amount that is payable is, and I really want to rally my colleagues um, along to make sure that we have a position on what we think should be uh, the right uh, way of dealing with this. In any event, and in any case, I want us to close the last financial year and the current one uh, on an understandable and amicable basis before we start the next financial year because I really don't want us to go into next year with similar type of ambiguous interpretation from different stakeholders, the Secretariat on one side, but also IALA on, on, on the other side. I just want to draw the attention of IALA colleagues to two really important um, um, rules of engagement that would help us uh, to drive this issue to a conclusion uh, very quickly. Number one is that there are some previous council decisions which uh, uh, we need to revisit and look at the spirit in which they were made. And if IALA needs to do some work, then work must be done. And for that, we just want to make sure that appropriate remuneration and uh, payments are done. But the second issue, and, and, and that is for the council to deliberate on, this is what we said, but this is the reality, what do we do and how do we actually uh, drive this forward. The second and really important issue, and, and this is one of the big questions that we need to deliberate on as a council in the future, not only on the IALA uh, decision that we are dealing with now, but generally on the running of the affairs of the community, is the unanimity of the decision-making by member states on every position that needs to be taken. And I think 
it, it is uh, a good thing to have unanimous decision, but I hope you also appreciate and understand the challenge that where unanimous decisions are not reached, that can really, really derail and, and, and take, uh, take things back. And, and I look at up to all the stakeholders um, for us to see how we can bring everybody on board. And hopefully we should be able to drive with that, but uh, make necessary adjustments for any uh, issues, uh, especially things that relate to the welfare of individuals. To be honest with you, I'm hearing some very difficult and, 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 and uh, unfortunate cases that are involving some of our members uh, of YALA that is now becoming uh, an, an issue that we should not allow to go any longer than is necessary. And that is why I want to appeal to everybody uh, to see how we can uh, bring this issue uh, where there are disputes then uh, that uh, we can resolve at a later stage. Uh, and, and to that end, uh, I want to, in my visit to Arusha later in the next week, to see how we can form a small a tripartite uh, caucus of involving Yala on one side, the secretariat on the other side, and then, of course, the representatives of the council to see how we can, A, deal with the issues of the past, but also try and develop unambiguous rules for the future so that we really don't have to be having to deal with this uh, into the future. And so, 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 so I think uh, those are some of the things that I want to uh, seek your understanding. Uh, consultations are going on. Um, I am in regular consultation with the speaker who has been really keeping me abreast of some of the challenges. And you should know he is your biggest advocate in making sure that we bring this thing uh, to an end. But whilst that is ongoing, I really want to appeal to the Secretariat um, and the accounting officer of the IALA in particular to make sure that where payments are eligible and are not in dispute, those payments must be made. And it has to be made uh, without any delay. And then things that require decision from the council to clarify if they are dispute, then that can be clarified and that is uh, a decision for the council. Uh, and, and, and so, honorable members, uh, through you, the speaker, I just want to say that really what would have been um, a much more broader uh, engagement that uh, I would have tabled uh, to IALA for discussion on some of the things uh, on behalf of my council members uh, is not going to happen now because this is really the issue of welfare is becoming a priority and something that is taking our time and attention. And I would like to commit that uh, we will bring this uh, to a close. There is not a single day I don't talk to any of my colleagues um, to see how we can bring this. Um, and I have also been uh, in touch with the Secretary General and that engagement is ongoing and I will be keeping the speaker abreast of some of those discussions. So let me just pause on that, uh, Honorable Speaker, and to the members, uh, I really apologize on behalf of the community for the pain that this has caused. Uh, we hope uh, to seek and uh, bring this to a close at the earliest opportunity uh, so that everybody can push on with their programs. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker and members. Thank you, Honorable uh, Council Chair. Um, what I can add is that uh, the Honorable Council Chair for the whole of yesterday and today has been asking for different documents from my office that we, 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 we sent and we continue to send. I think uh, the whole of yesterday, this is an issue he was working on. So hopefully... Working together, we should be able to resolve this, as he said, as soon as possible. And Honorable Minister, I'm in Arusha. I'm looking forward to you coming to Arusha next week. 
because when we are together, I think the discussion can be even more uh, smooth. Uh, Thank you. Honorable members, another item we had has been deferred. I spoke to the council chair and we agreed that we defer the issue of the tabling of the supplementary budget so that we can deal with the unfinished business about it and it will be introduced at a later date. Is that clear? Honorable council chair, you can confirm this. We agreed that it doesn't get tabled today because it is missing in some parts and uh, some procedures have, must be undertaken and it can be introduced at a date that between me and him we will agree on. So I think that is clear. Honorable Speaker, before you move on, I just want to request our new member from the United Republic of Tanzania. Um, we have a group, uh, a council group, uh, WhatsApp. Uh, um, I, I will find a way through the speaker to get your contact so that we can deliberate on some of these issues. I appreciate it. Thank you. So now, now that we are deferring number three, it consequentially affects number four on the order paper. And uh, and that means we to proceed to number five. Right? Honorable Speaker. Yes, who is that? Uh, Council. Oh, yes, honor, Honorable Professor. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. <clears throat> and um, I welcome also my brother, Ambassador Baruch, to this August House. And of course, uh, my brother in from Kenya, uh, the new chair of the council. I think one of the speakers and uh, members of Yala, uh, the issues raised by my brother from uh, Kenya, issues that are um, central to us as a council, indeed, um, as Rwanda. And uh, for the time I was uh, council chair, they were painful. They are painful to say the least because uh, I had mentioned to you on the members that I don't believe in people working without being paid, regardless whether they are, they are members of parliament or any other person. And unfortunately, there were some constraints that we faced um, administratively in the secretariat, indeed, among the member other countries because of the consensus rule that uh, bogged down the payment that even as a council had approved. I'm happy that my brother from Kenya has made very clear that this has to be done away with. And you can, you can count on our support here, personally myself, indeed, I guess my colleagues, make sure that this problem is done away with once and for all. We don't have to come be debating uh, obligations that we have to meet as an institution. I believe we have, we have bigger businesses to do and talk about than actually debating what is due and should be paid. I really don't believe that we should be having sessions to be debating about expenses that have to be paid. And I hope that the new Secretary General will help us in hearing this type of uh, problem once and for all. And so, Honorable uh, Speaker, I want to uh, concur with my brother that he has my support and our support make sure that we don't have to debate these issues seriously in this August House. I think the issues that should be taken for granted rather than be requested, sometimes begged, which is not worth this type of environment. And so, Honorable Speaker, you can count on my support, and I'm sure the support of my brother, Ambassador uh, Ruku, who is with us, uh, who should help us make sure that these issues are in the past. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank, thank you very much, Honorable. Honorable Speaker. Uh, yes. Honorable please, Speaker. Sir. Fancy. Yes. Proceed. Right, honorable, right, honorable speaker. Thank you very much for giving me this chance. First of all, I would like to congratulate uh, and welcome Ambassador Mbaruk Nasser Mbaruk to this August. Honorable, honorable Fancy, uh, 
because uh, we we I know everyone would want to congratulate the new member, but that normally comes in a substantive debate on what okay, I will make that substantive debate. Let me comment, right honorable speaker. Okay. Yes. Right honorable speaker, um first of all I would like to thank uh, the council member, especially the council chair, for his kind gesture and 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 that promise that he gave us it's really giving us a, a hope after a long struggle but i would like to request through you and the council chair that since iala accounts has some money the money that we are supposed to be paid let the member be, be paid that money when other issues are being solved Members are still owing the, 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 the assembly a lot of money. They will reconcile and deduct each and every member for, for the money that he, he or she has been paid. And they will find out how much has been remained for a certain member to be paid. So my request, council chair and council member, since we have the money in our account, uh, especially for, uh, for members to be paid, Please let us be paid what is in the account, and when uh, uh, when everything has been sorted out, we can reconcile, and every member will know how much or uh, how much he or she is still uh, need to be paid. Thank you, Right Honourable uh, Speaker. Okay. Um. Okay, Honorable Fancy, I get your point. And actually, there are some other members who had spoken to me about that uh, directly. Maybe I should... Uh, Council Chair, this is one thing that me and you can look at after, the, after this session. Look at the procedure, uh, the, the possibility that we can pursue uh, in between. Uh, as you work to resolve this matter, look at the practical ways that we can put in place to alleviate the problem. So maybe... Uh, so maybe honorable Speaker, I, I, I yes. can actually... I mean, as I said in my initial remarks, um, there are issues that are in dispute and there are issues that are not in dispute. Um, anything that is not in dispute, I think, should be paid as a matter of course. And that is what we expect from the accounting officer... Uh, to do that should not be um, a problem because that is why the accounting authority is vested um, in the accounting officer. Anything that is in dispute and requires further guidance or authority from the council, we would be more than happy to give guidance on that at the earliest opportunity. And one of the things that, as I've said, I've been trying to work on in the last few days is to get a picture from the council, I mean from the secretariat, on what in their view is eligible and what in the IALA side, IALA's view is eligible. And uh, uh, one of the things that I would expect is, you know, anything that is agreed on would be paid immediately without any, any problem. But as a matter of course, if there are issues that are within the scope of uh, normal operations, like sitting allowances and stuff, I think that should really proceed. We have enough problems, and as my member colleague from uh, Republic of Rwanda mentioned, to be honest with you, we cannot, the amount of energy that council have spent on dealing with these remuneration issues, which should be straightforward, is, is far too long. So I want us to spend on other issues of the community, uh, and so let the uh, the people who have the signatory rights please make sure that uh, what is due is paid and what they need clarification on they seek. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. Uh, there is going to be a Mr. meeting Speaker. of the Commission tomorrow. Our members, there is going to be a meeting of the Commission tomorrow and we shall work on the formula of what mm -hmm. can be paid in advance. Yeah. And and Mr. Speaker, on, on yeah. the point of, uh, if, if I may finish, order. Yeah. Honorable, Mr. Speaker, Honorable, Mr. Speaker, I if I may finish, Ca can I finish first? Yes. 
So I was saying, in line with the proposal, uh, I think when the commission meets tomorrow, we can develop a formula or scenarios of what can be advanced to members, and we shall seek the the assistance of the council chair to that effect. Is that clear? Honorable Adin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. And let me take this early opportunity to also congratulate the new uh, minister, uh, Waziri Mbaruk. We are happy um, to have you on board, and you are most welcome, and we look forward to a very close working relationship with you. I also want to thank uh, the, both the council members who spoke to, to, to this council chair uh, for his willingness to, to and his compassionate uh, way of looking at what the situation that is facing Iala uh, right now, um, and also for our Ziri from uh, Rwanda for understanding this. Mrs. Mrs. Speaker, I, I have I have one problem, and I, have, and, and I want to thank you also for, for saying that tomorrow we'll have a resolution on this matter. We have an elephant in the house which must be pointed to. Mr. Speaker, we have a clerk who is not under your order, who is not under the order of council, who is not going to implement whatever the council has now, the council chair has pronounced himself, whatever the other council members have pronounced themselves to. Tomorrow you will sit as a commission. I have no doubt, Mr. Speaker, you as an individual, you have the kind of heart to resolve this problem. Many a times I'm aware that you have given directives as a person and through a, a commission to res for this issue to be resolved. But it, has, it hasn't been resolved. Mr. Speaker, you have told us tomorrow uh, you will resolve this, uh, you, you will give guidance as to how those payments will be made. And we have seen that, clerk. today is one of our most important days. He's a, he's a, he's a person by nationality from Tanzania. We are swearing in the minister from Tanzania for, for, for ESC matters, the deputy minister for foreign affairs. That clerk, Mr. Cardonia, considers, considers this meeting where you are chairing, Honorable Speaker, and where the minister from Tanzania is being sworn in as being illegal. In fact, because the, constitu the, the treaty gives you, the Speaker, the mandate to call for, to decide as to when and where the, this assembly is going to sit. You have issued an, a memo that says that this assembly will sit in the manner in which it is in now. It's, it's called virtual. We are here, all of us physical, sitting here together as Kenyan members. I can see our colleagues from Rwanda, our colleagues from Tanzania, all of them, Burundi, all of them in all their numbers. All the members are seated here. You've called this meeting in a manner that is prescribed by law for you with your powers. He has defied you. He has said this meeting is illegal. The Waziri is being sworn in, the council chair is seated here with us, but you have a clerk who has said it's illegal. You have the, the, the city seated next to you, the custodian of the treaty interpretation for us here. Mr. Speaker, for God's sake, we've been taking these circles for many far too long. Are you in charge? Is the council in charge of council? Are you in charge of IALA as an organ, or is the clerk in charge of all of you? This is the question, the pertinent question, which must be answered. No. Unless we answer this issue, unless, unless we answer this, this, this critical question here and now today, and this house, Mr. Speaker, I know there, are member, there is a member of this house who is just about to move a motion of no confidence on that clerk now, Mr. Speaker. Tell me and tell us as members, why should we have a confidence in a clerk who has defied you in terms of this plenary that you have called for, who has disrespected his own nationality, the, 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 the United Republic of Tanzania, on a very important day when their minister is being sworn in as a council member to the community, and he is now seated somewhere listening to you. Mr. Speaker, he signed on. I can see on the screen there. He is signed on and listening to whatever that we are saying here in defiance and calling this plenary sitting as illegal. Mr. Speaker, how do, we, how do we treat this matter? You have the CTC in the city next to you. Can you give us legal interpretation of what happens? Who is in control? The treaty says that you are the head of IALA. You have given directives for what is supposed to happen. He has defied you. Mr. Speaker, 
before you give us promises of what is going to happen tomorrow in the commission, <laughs> can you please give us a direction to who is in charge and what is going on? Yes. Mr. Speaker, can I, uh, sorry, can I just come in, uh, Mr. Speaker, if you don't mind? This is a, okay, this is Council Chair. Council Chair. Uh, you can um, come. You can Look, I, I hear what Honourable Member uh, Abdelkadir is, uh, is saying. Um, I, I really don't want us to to pour everything out here. Um, we 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 want to find a way of resolving this amicably um, and in the earliest possible way. Um, this thing is slightly bigger than the clock of the IALA, uh, this issue of payments. Um, I, I think uh, you can take it to the bank that uh, if you have the council represented here and IALA is in full motion that uh, this meeting is legitimate. Whether it is illegal or not is something that I really don't want to argue about. But. The specific issue that uh, Honorable Speaker asked me to comment on is one that I have given uh, my commitment subject to confirmation and support from member states to try and see how we can resolve this. And so I request rather than getting into the details of uh, because people are taking directions and decisions from many quarters at the moment, unfortunately, and I, that's why I said I don't want us to start uh, really pushing uh, any direction uh, on anything specific. Uh, let's, let's try and give this um, uh, an opportunity. Ultimately, if the council says we pay, uh, we will pay. If the council uh, have some mixed reservations, then we will share that as well. So that is what I'm trying to see how I can get across as the quickest possible manner and my position still stands whatever is legible and uh, people need to be paid and it's within the rules i think that is a right for everybody in this world who is doing their work to be paid um and we will deal with the rest of it later so i just request that uh, we don't muddy the waters at the moment uh, if there are ways in which we can resolve this, I, as I said, let's have that opportunity next week when we can put a small caucus together from different stakeholder groups to resolve this. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable. Uh, uh, Honorable members, Pika, uh, the, uh, hold Pika. on, please. Re let me speak. Yes, let me speak. The, the last uh, sentence with the Honorable Minister is very important. Uh, when he said, when he's in Arusha, we shall discuss all these issues, mm. uh, I think what he didn't say in his remark is that issues of staffing and recruitment and management of the assembly and the other organs of the community is one thing that we have discussed a lot. Yes, we have dis discussed that a lot. So give it time. It is, it, is, it is one of the priorities also. Give it time, give us time, so that we can deal with it. Honorable Aden, uh, I proceeded to call meetings because I think it is uh, within my powers to call meetings. Uh, I am very alert on what I can do and what I cannot do. I try to keep within my lane and not overstep. And that is what has kept us going uh, since the time uh, we had this situation where we have to work virtually. Uh, I said to the commission that I have come to a conclusion that we shall be sharing with all of you what has been going on in terms of correspondences that possibly you had no information about. So it gives you the idea of where we have come from and where we are. So regarding the issue of the acting clerk or the substantive clerk, that is how we have agreed with the minister that we discuss it when he is in Arusha with the view of solving the problem once and for all. That is what I honestly think and believe works for us. 
that is what I believe works for us. But if there is going to be another shortcut that you think is better, I am always willing to, to allow situations to happen. But when I have, I have explained and offered my best advice, I've been discussing with the council chair the issue of acting class. He didn't want to say, but he can't say it didn't happen. So that discussion is going on. And we are, we are on the same page on how we need to solve the problem. That is what I believe works better for all of us, for the assembly. Members of the commission are more informed than the others, but that is what I think the channel we are in, the way we are handling the situation, is what will help us to solve problems uh, in a way that will not inflict uh, uh, unwanted uh, inconveniences. So honorable members, remember this was a communication. It was a communication. And the minimum debate we had is stemming from the communication. So I request that we proceed with the order paper of today. Uh, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, yes, honorable. Honorable Chair. Honorable Mr. Speaker. Speaker. Honorable Mr. Speaker. Speaker. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Uh, I had only a few Honorable comments. Mayor, I just want Honorable to address. Mayor, you to, can wait a bit. Uh, uh, speaker, I just want to make a comment on uh, what uh, Chair Council has said. However, I will just come back to the recommendation we made last year when we decided not to recommend Mr. Cardonia. I, I want to support uh, Honorable Aden's uh, argument toward our clerk when commissioners recommended that, recommended two names. We were actually, we recommended them based on the rule of procedure 83 sub rule D, where the commission had the power to recommend the clerk. But we oversee what will happen next. And I want to, uh, to ask uh, the chairperson to reconsider our recommendation of reappointing the clerk before it, it, gets, it goes beyond undermining all the Ayara organ because he's done it if it's not removed he will keep on doing it again and again he has undermined our speaker in our own eyes he has undermined members he has paid anyhow even now I'm talking I just got money from nowhere which is not even discussed in the commission so we want the cancer when they deliberate to look all this May if he has his feet and the proper to lead this organ. Thank you, Speaker. <laughs> Thank you very much. Honorable uh, Munya, uh, did I hear you? Speaker. I hear Thank you? you. Speaker. Yeah. I don't know. Mr. Speaker. Speaker. Thank you very much for allowing me at least to put some words on what has been said already. Uh, Mr. Speaker, first of all, uh, let me also congratulate and recommend uh, Ambassador Mbaru for being sworn in. Uh, is welcome. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we have, uh, we have put a really attention on what we've been told by uh, the council chair, by yourself, and uh, we, we agree on what you have decided, and you, we are ready to wait for tomorrow decision or from when you meet or when he is coming to Arusha next week. However, there are two things I would just like to remind you, Mr. Speaker and also to inform the new council chair. And uh, these two things should not, whatever the case, forgotten in your discussion. One, we want to know, and if it is possible right now, if not, okay, we'll wait, but uh, they want to know the sitting allows, is it paid position or per day? Because the experience of Iala 1, Iala 2, Iala 3, such kind of dispute has never been uh, Iala before. Four. It's only Iala 4 we are having such kind of disputes. This is why it's really, really discouraging us. It's very disappointing. We want to know why. That's one. And the two, when we had the sensitization program before, 
We have had a, a lot, almost three sensitization programs. Some of the sensitization programs, it, 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 it was a necessity and it was directed for us as members to visit some border posts. Some of us we went to Hororo, some of them we went to uh, Namanga, and so on and so forth. And that has been also been not taken care of today. We spent our hours, we spent our uh, night hours, we spent our everything, and yet we are not considered today, almost one year ago. This also we, we, we need, you we should not forget that, and some of us, we are almost in this virtual meeting, we are traveling a lot to Dodoma from Zanzibar to Dar es Salaam, but still is considered otherwise. Please, on your discussion tomorrow, please do not forget those two inputs. I thank you, Honest, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Mnya. That will come for sure. It will be discussed. Honorable Speaker. Yes. Honorable Speaker. Who is that? Kimbisa. Oh, Honorable Kimbisa. Honorable Kimbisa, yes. Good, good afternoon, sir. Honorable Speaker, uh, I just wanted to say one or two words that much as the chair of the council and yourself have said you will be dealing with this issue amicably we really appreciate but members of parliament are politicians and they are paid because they talk and this has been our job for some of us since time immemorial i just kindly ask you honorable speaker to let the members just vomit what they have for the moment, rather than just silencing them. So at least they can say something, and maybe we shall benefit that they have a lot of information they want to go. If we tell them, look, we shall do it tomorrow, we shall do this, we shall do this, we are trying to silence them, and we are not benefiting from what they are going to contribute. These are politicians, seasonal politicians, they have a lot to say. And that's why it makes them talk a lot, because they don't have a forum to, to talk. So I kindly ask you, Honorable Speaker, let the members say, the talk, you know, let us give them about 20, 30 minutes, let them talk. And then from there, we can we can deliberate. We shall hear some more things which may be benef uh, beneficial to all of us. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Kimbisa. First of all, let me declare clearly that uh, although I'm very cautious on what I can say and where, uh, I have no intention of silencing anyone. <laughs> uh, but this is a, a live streamed session. We have media behind us. If you want to vomit, as you said, I wouldn't stop you. But I think talking includes where you talk from and, uh, and in front of who. But otherwise, I have no intention of stopping you. We can even change the order paper here and we start the business of discussing whatever we, we, we want. But my wish was that we, we handle issues methodically in the procedure that we had agreed. But if we choose to talk because we have to, uh, you know, when I have registered my own caution, I end there. Uh, you know, a member can move and we suspend the business and we start talking. I'm ready, but this is uh, how I had preferred that we deal with issues. We have heard from council chair. We have a commission meeting tomorrow. We have council coming to Arusha. That is how methodically I thought we can deal with it. The, the commission problem. has already failed us. We yes, don't need the commission. Has I have they? Honorable Fatuma, have they failed you? Yes. Honorable Speaker, there is nothing to hide yes. today. Mm. Okay. The commissioners have so, told us they let me, have let me paid. ask you. Let me ask you, Honorable Member, you want us to discuss what? Yes. So that I change the business and we start discussing. Honorable, yes. Honorable Speaker, if, if, if you allow me. Uh, yes, Honorable Ade. Yes. I, I think, Honorable Speaker, we, we, we asked, uh, a, a, uh, I asked a question that probably required a legal uh, interpretation of. Uh, of the matter, but uh, the issue I think is being is being is being is being managed in uh, in another way. And you've said it to us that yes, you are in charge. You 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 called for this meeting, 
but will any decision that you make herein or pronounce yourself to is going to be implemented by your senior officer who is your clerk? That question is not answered yet. We've seen a number of decisions that you have made, Mr. Speaker, as chair of commission. You've acted in good faith for this assembly. I must admit personally that you've done a lot of good rulings or issues that are in record that you have done that your senior officer has refused to implement. And uh, Mr. Speaker, you know, Honorable Kimbiza is a muse, and when you're a muse, you say things in, 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 in quiet uh, words. When he tells you, let members talk about what is there. Mr. Speaker, you know and you are in possession of a motion that was brought to your attention with regards to members now seeking a redress with the East Africa Court of Justice. A, a motion that members thought will be in the order paper today uh, uh, for, 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 for discussion. I think this is what all the members that you see here are today uh, um, uh, um, waiting for. We didn't see it in the order paper. We don't know why it wasn't in the, uh, okay, in the order let me, paper. Let me clear that first and you proceed. I received the motion from Honorable Mbide. Honorable Mbide, you are in the room. So ordinarily, when a motion comes, I discuss it with the mover, and we agree how to proceed. So, Honorable Mbide, if you are here, what did we, did we agree about the motion that you brought to me? Uh, are you there, Honorable Mbide? Yes, I'm here, right, Honorable Speaker. Yes. First of all, did we discuss your motion, and what did we discuss, and agree? Uh, or if uh, we disagreed, you could also say we disagreed. Uh, right, Honorable yeah. Speaker, it was so agreed... Right. That yeah. it would be discussed that 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 the, you you would you wished the commission would have to, to to have a discussion on the same motion to the extent that it features on the Monday plenary, but where members would want this to go on on the Hansard, uh, right honourable speaker, I have no problem with it, for as long as the motion can be discussed and passed. Uh, the the reason why right honourable speaker members would want this motion to be passed. Uh, you have had the council chair talk of a lot of things, including consensus. Now, consensus, right on the chair, is a, is, is a treated matter. The East African court has already sounded itself on consensus, still being unanimity until the treaty is amended. Uh, when you look at the dispute, the disputed amounts being talked about, right on the speaker, members are not disputing. The, the paying authority is the one disputing. So, you see, there are a lot of things, right on the speaker, that are required, but for purposes uh, of are you okay? Are you okay? The motion is coming on the next order paper. Are you okay with that? I have no problem with it, right okay. but I'm That's not alone, right now, speaker. Yeah, 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 but that is how we have agreed. Again, uh, allow yes. me. Allow me. If, if uh, it is, uh, if, if it can we, be on date, right now, speaker. It will be on okay. the next order paper. The next. Okay. Much obliged, <laughs> right now, speaker. So, honourable, then you can proceed with the. You were still on the floor before I interrupted you. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, um, indeed now I'm guided with regards to, to the motion, um, with regards to the motion by Honorable Mbide and the fact that it is coming in the next uh, order paper, which is, which is okay. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I am seated in between two commissioners. And I am privy to every decision that the Commission has made since. And some of them, we have them. Uh, you know, we are colleagues, we, we, we have the information that is, uh, uh, that is there. Mr. Speaker, the Commission, in one of its recommendations, as was brought to our attention by Honorable uh, Chris, uh, Christopher from Burundi, made a decision once upon a time to recommend that one, Mr. Cadonia, will not be an acting clerk. And that decision was passed, but unfortunately, somehow, past commission, that authority was taken over by somebody else who gave or tabled before, commission, before council a different recommendation. Now your clerk is getting back at you. Let Every me decision that, that you also. have passed... Uh, Honorable Aden, let me correct that. The the, most, the the recommendation was tabled before the council the way it was, but it wasn't accepted. The decision was different, but the records wouldn't show that the recommendation to the council was different. That, that's not the, the, the proper record. 
the recommendation as was done was tabled before the council as it was done but the council took a different decision yeah. honorable speaker can i inform my brother honorable aden in regard to what you have just said honorable speaker the recommendation from commission was not taken to the council as it was passed by the commission the recommendation from commission was redrafted by a technical team of human resource which recommended that a commission has no mandate whatsoever to appraise a clerk and as such they gave a different recommendation and that background paper which is on the record the clerks with you there and ctc can uh, bring it or also us we can bring it from our emails was what was tabled to the council so the council did not act upon commissioner's decision they acted upon hr technical team decision thank you okay let, let me rephrase <coughs> what, what you have said honorable wanjiku is uh, is correct only that we can rephrase it like this council before council convenes they have their technical people uh, preparing for them so the technical team whatever the name is challenged the powers of the commission to make a recommendation and it was presented to council as such and i was made i listen to me i was made to explain that anomaly in writing and that record of what i wrote to council to clarify why the decision had to be taken by the commission was there and it is part of what they considered to make a decision so there was that recommendation from the technical team that the commission had no powers to do it and i i explained that indeed the commission had the powers to do it because the argument from the technical team was that it is the speaker to do it and my explanation was that the act direct that the council does it so when the decision was made that clarification was already there so what honorable anjiko saying the redrafting was the interpretation of the technical team so we cannot say the council took a decision in ignorance of any information it is just a decision they decided to take and we can have these records we can share with them okay. but i was on the floor no. Let me you are still on the floor honorable aden yes thank you thank you honorable uh, speaker honorable speaker i think you will appreciate the difficulty a member like me is going through in terms of comprehending this whole issue i have managed affairs outside of public life and in public life mr speaker mr speaker we have a situation at hand from the discussion just going on now it is clear that you have one aggrieved mr kadonya who now is roguely defying commission openly now mr speaker i have a two way suggestion to this one we go the waze style this is to napeleka we take such a, a fellow aggrieved elder under a tree to the elders he is sat down like an elder you discuss you are told swallow your saliva backwards please in other words please please uh, cool your anger and your issues will be discussed but in public management affairs of issues such an aggrieved officer is capable of doing a lot of harm and this is what we are experiencing today i want to ask you honorable speaker and in the advantage of council chair and many other council members seated here are we managing the affairs of this organization fairly in terms of administration with such an aggrieved officer in place no members are aggrieved honorable speaker i'm speaking with this a lot of anger one of my colleagues was locked in her house we know it there's nothing to hide here by her landlord you reported to him as a this matter was brought to your attention she wrote a letter that has many pages mr speaker i want to conclude by saying you have goodwill we know it we see it council chair has but you have one officer who has authority of signature between you and council seated here today 
and the assembly here seated today, you can make a decision by helping us in this situation. By tomorrow, when you sit for that commission meeting, Honorable Speaker, we persuade you, with the help of council, and I persuade that you bring council into that, with CTC with you. Mr. Speaker, please engage Mr. Kadonya at another level. And I'm glad that the senior most representative of the Tanzanian government is seated listening here to us, who is the Waziri. Please engage one Kadonya, Mr. Kadonya. He has brought the whole entire community into a crisis. No. Please help us sit down with him tomorrow and help us bring a solution to this problem. Yes, thank you, Honorable Adam. So, is your suggestion that we invite the council to our meeting? Uh, which would be a very good idea. Uh, and uh, yeah, we discuss it. <laughs> but honorable members, because I know there is a lot of discussion going on, I'm open for any, any suggestion from you. Any. And I can assure you, we will pursue it. So, there is one suggestion. We discuss this in the commission together with the ministers. And I think it is a good, it's a good suggestion. Any other suggestion? Honorable Kim Guy. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Speaker. And also, let me add my voice to congratulate uh, our new members, uh, Honorable Mabrook, Nasser Mabrook. Congratulate him to be with us. Honorable Speaker, uh, mine, uh, it is a question to the chair of the council. Uh, because he's with us here, because it seems the council are been giving huge documents during the council uh, summit uh, in Arusha in February. I think the members of council they do not have a time to read those documents, and the secretariat are push and hiding a money resolution that. Uh, even these Argos hours are spazzing the budget. Uh, we are sick plenary sessions and 21 days. But now we are being informed that the parliament are working only for 14 days and it is the council who are directing the secretariat. Where are this confusion have come from? And the same question again, right now, the speaker is there a directive also we read in the council resolution say it there be no any meeting about organ and institution if there are no fun in the account of the community the same council who have brought for us the the budget uh -huh. when there are no fun Thanks. and even when we are okay. considered the main budget also there are no fun are we in one for one of the speaker and chair of the council I think all those things now uh, it come mess of the of the of the community. For me, for the issue of Kadonya, I don't have any something to say it because if assembly does not have a right to appoint him and does not have, and does not have a right to remove him, let let, let him go back to to secretariat and then we brought our new colleague who can be with us. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Thank you very much, Honourable King. So. Uh, we, have Mr. Taken, uh, we have taken a proposal from Honorable Aden and uh, Honorable Kim. Mr. Mr. Speaker. Yes, Dr. Makam. Uh, Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. Thank you for allowing me to, to air my view. Mine is just to not to really talk about uh, the welfare issue first, but uh, I'll come to it. But the issue, first of all, is to congratulate Honorable Ambassador Mbaruk Mbaruk for taking on the position and also congratulate Honorable Aden for taking the position as the Chair Council. And uh, to congratulate the Honorable former Council Chair for handing over the, the Chairship. Uh, we, have, we have been, we, have, we, we really have trust in their leadership. But Honorable Mr. Speaker, I'd like just to relate the history we've, we've gone through in the past year. We're in the COVID pandemic, we went into the virtual meetings. We lost several key figures, including members of the summit, inc incumbent and previous. 
by President Nkuruzinza, we lost President Mkapa, we lost President Magufuli, we lost members of the council. Honorable Dr. Makame. I'm just saying the hard times we have been going through and the, the issue of welfare is just making it even more difficult for us. It's the same couple of We went in the new year, uh, Christmas, no, no remuneration. New year, no remuneration. Now we are fasting the holy month of Ramadan. I'd I just like to convey to my fellow members that I wish them a Ramadan Mubarak. And I want them to continue sustaining the, and, the, and the, be patient eh? and uh, fast devotedly. But again, we should be supporting each other during these times. And we are also anticipating that after the month of Ramadan, we are going to have Eid. And, uh, but, uh, and, Eid, and Eid to be good and for fast to be good, the, the pockets also have to be good. But uh, we are seeing that the welfare has been really st stamped upon. So, uh, Mr. Speaker, and uh, I believe the council chair is hearing this, and so is other, other members. I won't talk about the issue, the technical issues or other issues which are really frustrating the process. What I would like to say and insist here is that we need the goods to be delivered yesterday. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Okay, thank you, honorable members. Now, uh, uh, yes. may I plead with you that we proceed? Can I plead with you that we proceed with the, with the issues on the order paper? Then we can organize another meeting and sit and discuss this issue. We when, we have seen, when we have seen the development on what we have agreed, that would be fine. Uh, we can have a dedicated session on this uh, when we have done what we have agreed so far. Right, Honorable Speaker, you asked for suggestions. That is what we, we are trying to give you. Yes. We want to okay. give you suggestions. We, are, we Honor, want to Honorable give you Mukuria first. Please. Honorable Mukuria first. Okay, I just want to be very brief because I, there are many people talked a lot. My suggestion is until you people sit together with the minister or the commission, can the acting clerk step aside a bit and then once these issues are resolved, then we shall see the way forward. Thank you. How can you can you uh, advise how procedurally that can be done? Of course, omitting his own decision, if he, he he steps aside, no one can stop him. But if he doesn't, how do we go about it? It's a suggestion you will go and discuss about it as a commission because ah, okay. you ask for suggestions. Now okay, that's three. fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That is yes. good. Now I understand. Honorable fans. Yes, right, honorable speaker. Thank you again for another chance, right, honorable speaker. The problem of uh, acting clerk Cadonia is not during this time of pandemic. It started right after he was appointed as a, as an acting clerk when we were in the in interparliamentary games in, in 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 Kampala. We were having we we I was one of the members in 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 the former commission, and I remember many of times that Cadonia refused to implement the. The, the, the decision of the commission. So I, I, have, I have no faith, I have no hope that Cadonia will implement the decision of the commission which will sit tomorrow. Right, Honorable Speaker, I think as a wise person, uh, and I am sure that Cadonia right now is listening and following our, our discussion in this parliament, he should step down. And, and let other people or any other uh, clerk which is in the line to act, to act so that this assembly and the community can have peace once and for all. Because we are very tired, right, Honorable Speaker. Every day we are not working, we are fighting. Every day, uh, fight after fight, we are really tired. We need Cadonia either to step aside himself and go back to, to be a principal clerk or uh, uh, um, uh, this assembly can, re uh, can, can resolve to return Cadonia to the Secretary General so that Secretary General can decide where to take Cadonia. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker.
Thank you, Dr. Honorable Speaker. Um, um, I'm apologizing. I can't, I can't be seen, but um, I'm following. I, I just wanted clarification, Dr. Honorable Speaker, from you, because during the discussion, you ask a question, what is happening if Cardonia <laughs> refused to step down? I just want clarification from you. I thought this is the process that you normally do with commission and yourself to make decision. Then why the question if he refused to come out? That's the only clarification I wanted to know. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. And also let me congratulate the Minister from URT for swearing in today. You're welcome, Honorable Mahfouz, and congratulations. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Mariam. I think I was... I was challenging the member to to explain better, and he did, and I understood. Honorable Speaker, can I? Uh... Y- yes, Honorable Waziri. Mm. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I I am following uh, colleagues' uh, speech, and Honorable Kimbisa was good at uh, initiating this open forum. Uh, but but I think at the risk of people. Uh, saying um, similar things that others have said. The point on Kadonye has been made. It may appear that Kadonye is above the law or anything like that. That's how everybody feels, certainly at the moment. But I think everybody is uh, governed by somewhere and by some rules. And, you know, we want to be fair to him as well, uh, despite all the pain that uh, members are saying he may have uh, he may have caused he's still a member of the staff of the community and one of the things that i have learned in my time here is when we want to resolve a lot of this kind of issues uh there was a option that honorable abdikadir was alleged alluding to seems to be more effective than uh using kifua for lack of better word and, and, and so I really, really would like to uh, plead with members that there are a number of things that are changing, including the leadership at the Secretariat. Uh, there are certain decisions that the Council has uh, decided to hold on, including recruitment of staff, which would include recruitment of IALA staff as well that are all part of the program that the speaker alluded to earlier on on some of the issues that we have been discussing. And so so I, I really would want to, unless we want to muddy the water and not resolve anything, because as I told you, um, you know, employees of the community are representative of member states. And how they are treated is very important, and we must not lose sight of some of the issues that this kind of thing can cause. And, and the reason why we are having this problem is because this unanimous rules, anything can ignite and anything can cause a bit of a challenge. And so with uh, great humility, I just want to plead with colleagues that the issue has been registered and the issue is uh, hopefully going to be dealt with behind closed doors. Uh, anybody, even those who make uh, unpopular decisions, uh, sometimes may be proven to be right, but whatever the case, let's uh, not belabor the point on the issue that uh, has been discussed uh, sufficiently by certain members. Uh, and then uh, we will find an amicable way, of course, as council members, uh, to resolve this in a manner that is in line with the rules. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Waziri. Now we proceed. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Mini. Uh, Item number five of order paper, which is now item number three after the two items being disposed of, being removed. Report of the Committee on Legal Rules and Privileges on the Oversight Activity on the Compliance with the ESC Protocols and, and Laws by ESC Institutions Phase 2 by way of motion. Chairperson, Committee on Legal Rules and Privileges. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I want to move a motion that this house uh, resolve on the uh, on the report of the committee on legal rules and privileges 
on the oversight activities on compliance with the EAC protocols and laws by EAC institution yeah, phase two. I beg to move. Right, Honorable Speaker. Seconders. Seconders. Honorable Kim Gai, Honorable Momamo, Honorable Dr. Oburu. Honorable, honorable, honorable chairperson, you can proceed and present the report. Thank you so much, right, honorable speaker. Let me begin immediately uh, on page three. You know, page one and page two uh, headings and uh, acronyms. So the, the 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 beginning of the report is on page three, and that's introdu introduction. Article 9.2 of the Treaty for the Establishment of the East African Community empowers the Summit of Heads of States to establish institutions of the community. Article 9.3 provides that the East African Development Bank and the Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization are surviving institutions of the community. Other institutions of the community are the Lake Victoria Basin Commission, the Civil Aviation Safety and Security Oversight Agency, the Inter-University Council of East Africa, the East Africa Community Health Research Commission, the East Africa Community Science and Technology Commission, the East African Community Kiswahili Commission, and the East African Competition Authority. Institutions of the community are established by various legal instruments, including protocol, charters, and acts of the community. Organs, institutions, and other stakeholders are required to comply with the with and implement the legal instrument establishing the institutions and those related to the functions of the said institutions. From 9th to 12th of October 2020, the Committee on Legal Rules and Privileges undertook an oversight activity to assess the compliance and implementation of the protocols, laws, and legal instruments by the institutions of the community. Due to resource constraint, the committee was able to undertake this activity to institutions located in the Republic of Uganda, which are the East African Development Bank, the Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization, the Inter-University Council of East Africa, the Civil Aviation Safety and Oversight Agency, that is CASOA. It is against the above information that the Committee on Legal Rules and Privileges decided to proceed with Phase 2 of this activity to cover the following institutions. The Lake Victoria Basin Commission, Kisumu, Kenya, the East African Health Research Commission, Bujumbura, uh, Burundi, the East African Science and Technology Commission, Kigali, Rwanda, and the East African Kiswahili Commission in Zanzibar, the United Republic of Tanzania. The objectives. The main objectives of this activity was to assess the level of compliance to protocols and laws of the community by the ESE institutions. The specific objectives include the following, to assess how the institutions comply to and implement the protocols and laws of the community to assess the effectiveness of the EAC protocols and laws governing the EAC institutions, to assess the status, privileges, and immunities of the institutions of the community as provided for by Article 138 of the Treaty, to assess the challenges facing the EAC institution in complying and implementing the EAC protocols and laws, and finally to propose amendments to protocols and laws of the community. Methodology. This activity held physical and virtually as follows. So it was a hybrid uh, activity that uh, we held it virtually as well as physically. Members of the committee from the partner states where the institution is located visited the headquarters of the respective institutions and held interactive engagement with the management that of that institutions. Institutions visited where the East African Kusahili Commission the East African Health Research Commission, and the East African Science and Technology Commission. The virtual meetings through Microsoft Teams were held to interact with members of the committee and institutions made their presentation before the committee during the virtual engagement. In their presentation, institutions were requested to provide the following information, establishment of the institution, the legal instrument governing the institution, regional and legal instrument that affect the operation of the co of the institution, the status, privileges, and immunity of the institution as per Article 138 of the treaty, and other related issues. Stakeholders of the institution, how they work with, challenges and that the institution face in complying with implementing the protocols and laws of the community and those of partner states, if any, areas that require review or amendment in the existing legal instruments, and expectations of the institution from the committee and the assembly in general. 
presentation from the institutions, the Lake Victoria Basin Commission. The Lake Victoria Basin Commission is an institution of the ESC established through the Protocol for Sustainable Development of Lake Victoria Basin. The protocol was signed in November 23 by then the three East African Community Partner States, which were Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. The protocol was ratified in December 2004, paving way for two important aspects. The establishment of a framework for management of Lake Victoria Basin and the establishment of institutional framework for the management and development of the Lake Victoria Basin ecosystem. While the Republic of Rwanda, Burundi, and South Sudan joined the community, they acceded to the protocol. The legal instrument governing LVBC. The primary legal instrument that governs the LVBC is undertaking her mandate is the protocol for the sustainable development of the Lake Victoria Basin. Article 3 of the protocol provides for the scope of cooperation, which lists the area that partner states have in conservation of LVBC. Further provisions online outline on how the LVBC should address each of the areas. The port protocol is complemented by other documents, such as the shared vision and strategy framework for management and development for Lake Victoria Basin. This document was approved by the Council of Ministers in 2005 and comprehensively explained the vision for Lake Victoria Basin and further provides strategy for the attainment of the vision. Regional and national legal instruments that affect the operation of the LVBC. There are a number of regional legal instruments that complement the operation of the Lake Victoria Basin Commission. Such, a, such instruments include the following. The Treaty, the Charter for Establishment of Lake Victoria, Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization, the ESC Climate Change Policy and Action Plan, the Lake Victoria Transport Act 2007, and then the, its regulations 2010. The overall uh -huh. effect of this legal instrument is positive because they address areas of the protocols that are weak, for instance, management uh, and a, development of fisheries. There is a resources. microphone that is not muted. Uh, if you can uh, do so, please. Uh, if someone forgot to mute the microphone. Honorable Kennedy, proceed, please. Okay, the overall effect of these legal instruments is positive because they address areas of the protocol that are weak, for instance, management and development of fisheries resources. Perhaps the biggest challenge is the national legal instruments, which often downplay the protocol as well as other regional uh, legal instruments. The status and privileges and immunities of the LVBC. The privileges and immunities for Lake Victoria Basin Commission are enshrined within the headquarters agreement that was signed in 2006 between the Republic of Kenya and the East African Community. While most of the immunities have been accorded by Kenya to the Commission and her staff, the same cannot be said with regard to privileges which are basically negotiated. Lake Victoria Basin Commission prepared a report on the status of immunities and privileges of its staff, which is annexed as Annex 1 of this report. Annex 2 of the headquarters agreement between the Republic of Kenya and the East African Community for LBBC, the stakeholders of LBBC. Given the broad mandate that LBBC Commission is accorded by the protocol, engagement of stakeholders is a very critical such that among the guiding principles for implementing implementation of these various provisions of the protocol is the principle of public participation or simply put together stakeholders' participation. Three categories of stakeholders have been critical in the management of LBBC operation within the Lake Victoria Basin Commission, namely the East African Partner States through the Sectoral Council of Ministers for Lake Victoria Basin, private sector through the Lake Victoria Basin Investment Forum, the civil society through the Stakeholders Forum, the Lake Victoria Lead Partners Interagency Network Forum, and the development partners through the Donors Consultative Forum, stroke Donors Strategic Dialogue Forum. Challenges. The LVBC operates through the protocol, which is a very soft law, without action for non-compliance. The Commission is required to refund development partners on money they use on value-added tax. The headquarters agreement only provides for value-added tax exemption on services and not goods. And some partner states are normally reluctant to implement regional legal instruments and prefer their national legal instruments. Areas that require a review or amending in the existing legal instrument. Enactment of the Lake Victoria Basin Commission Act to give the Commission the corporate identity. Yala already passed this bill and it awaits assent by the head of states. 
amendment of the headquarters agreement between the government of Kenya and the ESC for Lake Victoria headquarters in Kisumu, Kenya. Issues for consideration are highlighted also in Annex 1 of this report. Incorporation of the Republic of South Sudan into the programs of Lake Victoria Commission, the provision that defines the riparian partner states of ESC is based on the inflow into Lake Victoria and must consider the effect of Lake Victoria on the downstream countries as witnessed recently during the floods. Review and scope of cooperation under the protocol for sustainable of for sustainable of the Lake Victoria Basin, which is quite broad. It was suggested that the Commission may need to focus more on issues of transboundary ecosystem, blue economy, and maritime transport. Expectation of the LVBC from the Committee on Legal Rules and the Assembly. The Lake Victoria Basin Commission expects the Committee on Legal Rules and Privileges and the Assembly to assist the Commission by urging the Council of Ministers to address issues that are facing Commission, including the following. First, tracking the assent of the Lake Victoria Basin Commission Bill by the heads of states, the proposed review of the protocol and issues relating to the scope of cooperation, definition of the basin, this includes downstream countries, inclusion of all transboundary ecosystems into the mandates of the Commission, and autonomy of the Sectoral Council of Ministers. Renegotiation of the headquarters agreement to ensure conformity with the one of the EAC Secretariat. The East African Health Research Commission, the presentation of the East African Health Research Commission was made by Dr. Novart, the other name is difficult to pronounce, who is the acting secretary of the ESC uh, Health Research Commission. He informed the committee that the East African Health Research Commission was established in accordance with Article 118 of the treaty. It was established by the protocol for the establishment of the East African Health Research Commission that was signed on the 13th of September 2008 and operationalized in 2015. It was established as a mechanism for making available to the ESC advice upon on which matters of health, health-related research and findings that are necessary for knowledge generation, technological development, policy formulation and practice and for other related matters. The vision of the ESHRC is a healthy and prosperous community built on evidence-driven policy and practices, which emanate from highly quality research. Its mission is to improve health and well-being of the citizens of the community by generating, assessing, capturing, synthesizing, sharing, disseminating, and utilizing health research and findings, as well as technological development that are suitable and relevant for the community and its people. The permanent headquarters of the commission is in Bujumbura, Burundi. The land to, the, to build the permanent headquarters was acquired free of service in November 2019. The money for preliminary construction work was secured last year. However, it was not utilized because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The East African Health Research Commission is preparing a team of experts from the ESC Secretariat to support the East African Health Research Commission to develop the architectural plan for the building. The legal instrument governing the ESHRC. The following are the reported legal instruments governing the ESRC. The protocol for establishment of the East African Health Research Commission, the headquarters agreement between the government of the Republic of Burundi and the East African Community for the Health Research Commission, and the draft bill on the establishment of the ESC Health and Research Commission. The Sectoral Council of Ministers of Health directed the EAHRC Secretariat to prepare and submit for amendments of the protocol for the establishment of ESRC. The Secretariat prepared a protocols amendment which was considered by various organs and institutions of the community. However, the process is yet to be accomplished due to the challenges of aligning the mandate of the Commission and that of Health Department of the ESC Secretariat, privileges and immunities. According to the headquarters agreement, EAHRC is exempted from paying taxes from relevant authorities and staff of the Commission are always given resident permits. However, it was reported that staff of the EAHRC from the Republic of Burundi do not enjoy privileges like their colleagues from other partner states. Their key, key stakeholders are Ministry in Charge of ESC Affairs, Ministry in Charge of Health, National Focal Point Persons, Research Institutions, 
academic institutions, health facilities, pharmacies, research scientists, research networking. Expectation from the committee. They, they requested an advocacy for getting funds to start the process of building the permanent headquarters, uh, fast-tracking the recruitment of staff, guidance on privileges of staff of the EASRC and nationals of the Republic of Burundi, seems like the honorable honorable chairperson has a connection problems is there a member of legal committee that can proceed from where he ended as he connects back any, any other member from legal yes right honorable speaker i can proceed you can proceed as he connects back thank you the east african science okay, okay, and technology back. commission oh, honorable kennedy uh, you were your connection was cut off maybe you can go back for like uh, 4.2 go back to 4.2.4 expectations okay, 4.2.4 uh, yes expectation of the east african health research commission from iala advocacy for getting funds to start the process of building the permanent headquarters fast tracking the recruitment of EAHRC staff, guidance on privileges of EAHRC staff who are nationals of the Republic of Burundi, advocacy for EAHRC to conduct research and on critical areas, especially on COVID-19, amendments of the protocol establishing the EAHRC, enactment of the EAHRC Act, that is what they requested from uh, IALA. Next is the East African Science and Technology Commission, ESTECO. The presentation for the ESTECO was made by Muyambi Fortunate, the acting executive secretary. He presented the following information, establishment of the ESTECO. The fifth extraordinary summit of the ESC heads of state held on 18th June 2007 established the East African Science and Technology Commission and institution of the ESC. The commission was operationalized in July 2015. The overall objective of ESTECO is to promote and coordinate the development, management, and application of science and technology to support regional integration and socioeconomic development. The mandate and function of ESTECO are to coordinate and facilitate the activities of partner states and national science and technology institutions. The commission has a governing board and secretariat. Its on organogram provides for 25 staff. Currently, the commission has eight staff in established position and three short-term staff. The legal instrument governing ESTECO. The treaty for the establishment of ESC. The protocol on the establishment of the ESTECO. The ESC financial rules and regulation 2012. The ESC staff rules and regulation 2006. The ESC procurement procedures manual 2020. The headquarters agreement be between ESTECO and the Republic of Rwanda 2014, the rules of procedure for ESTECO governing board 2019, the ESC development strategy 2016 stroke 17 to 2020 stroke 2021, and the ESTECO governing board manual 2017. Regional and national legal instruments that affect ESTECO operations. The protocol on the establishment of the ESC common market protocol, the protocol on co on environment and natural resource, the protocol on information communication and technology networks, the ESC Auth Act 2019, the ESC Human Resource and Procedure Manual 2015, the Industrialization Strategy 2012-2032, the ESC Development Strategy 2016-17 to 2020-2021, and the protocol on the establishment of the East Africa Health Research Commission. Status privileges and immunities of ESTECO. One, status of the commission, which is on Article 4. The government of Rwanda accorded the following privileges and immunities to ESTECO. Its property, funds, assets, wherever located in its territory. Property and assets for ESTECO, property and assets for ESTECO enjoy immunity from legal process except where it has expressly been waived. 
the commission property and assets are immune from such requisition, classification, or expropriation and any judicial and legal action. Archives of the commission and all documents belong to it are held by it wherever they are lo wherever located are in voyable. The commission's its properties, its property, assets, income, and transaction are exempt from direct taxation, including VAT, customs duties on goods and import equipments, or purchase for its official use. Obligation relating to payments, withholding, or collection of any tax or duty provided that such assets are not sold in Rwanda. The Commission may hold funds and operate accounts in any currency. It is free to transfer such funds from one partner state to another, subject to foreign exchange regulations. The Commission may lease additional premises for its official use, such as additional premises are demand to are deemed to form part of the headquarters of the commission for the duration of the lease and enjoy such privileges and immunities. Communication of the commission, Article Four. Communications of the commissions enjoy enjoys treatment not less favorable than that accorded to any international organization in Rwanda. No censorship is applied to official correspondence of the commission that include publication documents, visual aids, stills and moving pictures, films, sound recordings, and other scientific recordings. The Commission has the right to receive official correspondence to publication recordings either by courier or in a sealed bag, which enjoy privileges as diplomatic couriers and bags. Right to access and resident, Article 6. The following persons have the right to entry, resident, transit, and exit in Rwanda to for proper performance of their functions. Members of staff of the commission, consultants employed by the commission, staff of the secretariat of the community, persons other than members of staff of the commission who shall carry out missions of the commission, and any representative of the media whom the commission shall decide to accredite after due consultation with the government. Immunities according to the other representatives of the commission. Representatives of partner states attending meetings convened by the Commission enjoy the following immunities and privileges. Inviolability for all papers and documents, the right to use codes and to receive papers or correspondence by courier or sealed bag, exemption from immigration restriction or national service obligation in the state which they are visiting in the exercise of their functions. The same facilities in respect of currency or exchange restriction according to the representatives of foreign governments or temporary official missions. The same immunities on their personal baggage as are accorded to members of comparable ranks and diplomatic missions. Accorded the same privileges on exchange control facilities as accorded to the official comparable rank in diplomatic mission, and given the same repatriation facilities with their families in time of crisis as staff of diplomatic missions. Key stakeholders. ESC organs and institutions, National Council, Stock Commission of, on Science and Technology, Ministry responsible for science, technology, and innovation in partner states, Ministry responsible for ESC affairs, Ministry responsible for ICT and innovation, ESC cent regional centers for excellence, public and private universities, national research institutions and organizations, international and regional organizations like African Development Bank, the United Agency for International Development, IDRC, CEDA, ICPE, UNESCO, Republic of Estonia, UNEP, and UNECA, national and regional private associations, and innovators, incubators, and ICT hubs. Challenges faced by ESTECO. Delayed amendment of the ESTECO protocol by the Secretary and the ESC partner state. Delayed ratification of ESC science, technology, and innovation and intellectual property policies by ESC partner states. Non-compliance with, with Regulation 2313 of the ESC staff rules and regulation on staff promotions by step on the same position with 26. Non-compliance with the Regulation 39.6 of ESC staff and regulation on staff in salary increment. Absence of policies and laws on science, technology, innovation in some ESC partner states, inadequate staffing of the commission, inadequate budget for the commission, areas that require review in the ESC laws. The ESTECO informed the committee that the protocol and the establishment of ESTECO needs to be amended in the following areas. Amendment of Article 8 on composition of the governing board, 
from nine to five members per partner states. There are currently nine members per partner state, so they want it to be reduced to five. Amendments or functions of the governing body, they are not explicit in the protocol. They are mixed with the functions of the commission. That's paragraph 6.2. And amendment of paragraph 9.3 on the quorum of the board meetings to define the quorum for the board meetings in compliance to the proposed composition of the governing board. Expectation of a stakeholder from the committee and the IALA. Advocacy to ensure that the amendment of the ESC protocol and rectification, rectification of other STIs protocol is expedited. And ESC urged ESC partner state to enact national laws that regulate science, technology, and innovation. Initiate the ESC Science, Technology, and Innovation Act. Amend the protocol establishing the Inter-University Council of East Africa, the East Africa Health Research Commission, to remove conflicting mandates with ESTECO urge the EAC partner states to timely disburse funds to enable ASTECO to implement its program and advocate to ensure that more allocation funding to ASTECO programs to at least 60% of its total budget. Some achievement, ASTECO registered the following achievements. The commission secured the land for construction of its permanent headquarters, although the process of getting the title deed is still ongoing. The development of the EAC regional policy for science, technology and innovation the development of the ESC regional policy on intellectual property, the regional ESC innovation led by economy strategy, the, region, the development of regional STEM strategy, STEM stands for science, technology, uh, entrepreneurs, and mathematics. Establishment of East African Journal and Science, Technology, and Innovation, regional collaboration research program developed, regional capacity building in STEM, training in scientific paper and proposed uh, writing, Est assessment of existing knowledge and technology transfer in the ESC region and identification of potential regional centers of excellence and knowledge and technology, training in entrepreneurial skill and job creation for science, for, for STEM, postgraduate studies and research, Network of national industrial research and development organizations to support adoption and transfer of manufacturing and industrial technology. The second e-health and telemedicine workshop, ministerial conference on trade exhibition health to support ICT applications for health. The first regional STI conference held in 2019 in Kampala, Uganda. The first regional bioeconomy conference held virtual between the 21st to 22nd October 2020. Regional STI stakeholders consultation conducted to validate the regional STI policy, IP policy, and bioeconomy strategy. Establishment of regional working groups in STI priority areas. Partnership mobilization conducted at STECO Nairobi, UNECA, African Development Bank, ICPE, Bioinnovation Act, SGCI, and Estonia. And the constitution of first and second STECO governing board on East Technical Committee. The East African Commission, uh, Kiswahili Commission establishment. The East African Kiswahili Commission is an institution of the community responsible for coordination and promotion of the development on the use of Kiswahili in the region and beyond. The Commission derives its mandate from Article 137.2 of the ESC Treaty, which states that Kiswahili shall be developed as a lingua franca of the community. The following are the functions of the EAKC coordinate and oversee the work of national Kiswahili councils and other member state institutions. Strengthen collaboration in regional research, assist partner state develop centers of advanced study and research in Kiswahili. Promote and enhance collaborative relations with the development partners and organizations with similar objectives. Facilitate the development, and region, development of regional Kiswahili policies for the exchange of staff and students in Kiswahili institutions and monitor the effectiveness of such policies. Identify Kiswahili training needs and address them through such efforts as curriculum review and development, reform, change, and innovation, teaching learning methods, development of instructional materials, and research and dissemination. 
advocate for the development and use of Kiswahili as a link of Franca within the community and beyond, and encourage the use of Kiswahili in the conduct of civil business and public life within the community. Legal instruments. The ESCK, the EAKC, was established by a protocol ratified by all partner states of ESC. The Commission developed the East African Kiswahili Commission Bill, which is currently under the consideration by the Council to the community. This will provide a comprehensive legal framework for the full and effective operationalization of the Commission, regional and legal instruments that affect the EAKC. The Treaty for the Establishment of the East African Community, the Protocol for the Establishment of EAKC, Headquarters Agreement between EAC and the United Republic of Tanzania, the Constitution of Pandan States, the Cultural Charter for Africa 1976, the Language Plan Action for Africa 1986, the Charter for African Cultural Renaissance, the Harari Intergovernmental Conference 1997, the UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights 1948, status and privileges. In line with Article 138 of the treaty, the headquarters agreement between the United Republic of Tanzania and the East African Community and Article 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 provides for immunities and privileges specifically the commission gets tax exemption from Zanzibar Revenue Board but claims of VAT refunds from TRA remains forthcoming. Staff of the Commission are granted all immunities and privileges prescribed under Article 10 of the Headquarters Agreement. Key stakeholders, so Hilly Councils from partner states, Hilly Research Institution from partner states, Kiswahili Departments of Public and Private Universities in partner states, Kiswahili Media Operators from partner states, Media Councils of partner states, Kiswahili Writers Association in partner states, Ministries Responsible for Kiswahili in partner states, Ministry Responsible for Culture in partner states, Ministry Responsible for Education from partner states. Challenges. The Commission faces a number of challenges, but the main ones are inadequate personnel, inadequate funding for implementation of its activities, lack of National Kiswahili Council in partner states, except for the Republic of Tanzania, lack of national Kiswahili policies, areas that requires amendment. The EAKC informed the committee that the following amendments are needed. The protocol for establishment of EAKC amendments prepared and approved by the council. The treaty to provide for Kiswahili as an official language of the community. Expectation, from EA, expectation of EAKC from IALA to lobby partner states to establish national Kiswahili councils and develop favorable national language policies for Kiswahili for its development and use. To allocate sufficient budget for EAKC, double the current budget of 1.3 US dollars and the lobby partner state to allocate budgets for Kiswahili activities. Also urge the Council of Ministers to fast track recruitment, recruitment of key staff of the Commission. Achievement, renovation of the headquarters building, Kiswahili capacity assessment, that is the, in ESC, that is capacity assessment report they presented. The research and publication, three publications were made. Curriculum review and change, they are on books and the curriculum review and the change. Providing advice on establishment of national Kiswahili councils. Formation of regional Kiswahili association. Formation of national Kiswahili association, RSS. Draft ESC Kiswahili policy. Development and program programs and manual for Kiswahili teaching and learning, assisting, assisting partner states, Kiswahili institutions to develop and propose, promote Kiswahili mobility program. The observation of the committee, the tenure of the service of the executive secretaries of EAKC, the East African Health Research Commission, and the ESTECO expired more than six months ago, and all these institutions are being headed by acting executive secretary. Moreover, the tenure of the executive secretary of the Lake Victoria Basin Commission is going to expire in June 2021. There is disparity of privileges according, according to organs and institutions of the community depending on the host partner states. The ratification of the protocols of privileges and immunities is expected to therefore address this challenge. The protocol that establishes all the four institutions covered under this activity need to be amended. The committee noted that the process of reviewing those protocols is too slow. All organs and institutions of the community face a serious problem of understaffing 
occasioned by the delay of the recruitment process. National Kiswahili councils are expected to promote the use of Kiswahili in partner states and the entire community, however, only the Republic of the United Republic of Tanzania has the National Council for Kiswahili. All institutions of the community are seriously underfunded by the community. Some partner states do not have national laws to regulate science, technology, and innovation, a situation that may hamper the work of ESCHECO. There is also a challenge overlapping of the mandate between the Inter-University Council of East Africa, the East African Health Research Commission, and the East African Technology Commission that necessitates for the harmonization of the protocols establishing those institutions. There's delay in the disbursement of contribution from partner states that affect all organs and institutions of the community. Some partner states prefer their national laws over the ESC protocols and laws that are contrary to Article 8.4 of the treaty. Some partner states delay in refunding the VAT paid by organs and institutions of the community and consequently affects the operations of the community. Lack of national Kiswahili policies in the partner states may delay the process of making Kiswahili as a link of franca of the community. The committee therefore recommends the following to the, to the assembly to urge the council of ministers. One is to fast track the recruitment of the executive secretaries of all institutions and all the existing vacancies in all organs and institutions of the community. Direct partner states that have not ratified the protocols on privileges and immunities to rectify it in order to address the existing problems with regard to privileges and immunities in the community. First track the review and amendment of all protocols governing institutions of the community. Direct all partner states that do not have the National Kiswahili Council and the National Kiswahili Policies to establish those councils and develop the Kiswahili policies. Consider and increase the budget of all organs and institutions of the community. Direct all partner states to enact national laws to regulate science, technology, and innovation in their respective partner states. Address the conflict of mandate between IOSEA, EAHRC, and ESTECO. Direct the Secretary General to renegotiate the headquarters agreement between the Republic of Kenya and the East African Community for Lake Victoria Basin Commission to address the disparities identified. First track the assent of the Lake Victoria Basin Commission Bill. Provide resources to the construction of the East Africa Hair Research Commission and the East African Science and Technology Commission headquarters. Prepare bills to legislate on the establishment of ESC institutions that are established by community laws. Direct partner states to timely remit their financial obligations to enable organs and institutions of the community to implement their programs as planned and to remind all partners states that in accordance with paragraph 4 of the article 8 of the treaty, community organs, institutions and laws shall take precedence over similar national laws once on matters pertaining to the implementation of this treaty. Right, Honorable Speaker, this is the presentation of the report, and thank you so much. Thank you very much, Honorable Kennedy Mukuria, Chairperson Committee on Legal Rules and Privileges for a very eloquent presentation of the report. Honorable Members, I now want to propose the motion that the report of the Committee on Legal Rules and Privileges on the oversight activity on compliance with the EAC protocols and laws of EAC institutions, phase two, be adopted. Debate is open. Honorable members, uh, would it be a good idea that we can adjourn now because we have very little time remaining and we resume debate in our next session? Yes, Honorable Speaker. Yeah. Yes, Honorable okay. Speaker. All right. Then, yes. Then we can resume. Yes, Dr. Burk? Is it a good Mr. idea? Speaker, I was saying I, I support uh, your suggestion. Yeah, because if we start debating, we will be interrupted uh, by time in just a few minutes to come. So I adjourn the house until the next Tuesday at 2 30. House adjourned. Have a nice evening. Until? Hold on. Monday. Monday.
we resume on Monday. On Monday, not Tuesday. Monday at 2.30. Thank you. How's that, John?